want to see? Two extra rotations. Yeah. So, we're just going to have him go through a simple flexion motion for us, all the way back, and stay there for me. Because I want to be able to notice. And this is where you want to come around the side and see if one arm's in front of the other. Okay? And then you're going to go abduction, perhaps. Watch their facial expression, because if they wince, it tells you something, doesn't it? And when they wince, what might it indicate? Instability. Could be, more likely. What's the form? Maybe, somebody said it, impingement is the most common. If they got a tear, they're probably going to do something else. Classic or rotator cuffs do one of those kind of things, right? But if you do see change over, oh, that's the pain, then that starts guiding us into some of these other tests, right? External rotation. I don't usually do down here if it's a relatively normal. I take them up and go externally. Mostly what I'm looking for here is quality of motion to some degree quantity of motion. But as we talked about this morning, if quantity needs to be um, measured, then we're going to go back and do that with the goniometer in a more stable position. Okay? Does anybody know Syriax's capsular pattern for the shoulder? Do they even teach that anymore? Frozen shoulder syndrome, what to the order of limitations were. Some of it's been refuted. The shoulders held up pretty well. His capsular patterning for other parts of the body haven't, uh, haven't uh, held up as much. What's most limited? Flexion. Right. Whoever said external, that's correct. Typical with shoulder, with a frozen shoulder. Now, think about it. This is, again, why we, why we do this. Why do you think that would be with a frozen shoulder? Posture? posture plays a role, but if your shoulder hurts, what do you do? Yeah, you don't move it. <coughs> and where do you not move it? You hold it this way. So what can't you do? Extra. That, the opposite of this. So most limited is external rotation. Second most limited typically is flexion. usually abduction over flexion and least involved is internal rotation. And again, some of that's been attacked justifiably in the literature, but a lot of your version shoulders, that's exactly the pattern that those, you'll see them. You're almost never going to see a frozen shoulder in somebody like this. You'll see women about two to one over men, because I'm not going to do a frozen shoulder lecture. There's just not enough time. Jason won't give me any more time. When I see Jason, I'm going to let him know when I need more time. But, no, I a whole semester on the shoulder. <laughs> Jason knows me too well. I could do a whole semester on the shoulder. Um, so you're not going to see that in people like him, but you still have to understand it and know what the pattern looks like. And more importantly, you've got to be as good as Erica to address them. She'll tell you she'll crank on a frozen shoulder, but we've got to take care of all this other stuff first. So if we find range of motion deficits, then we're going to go to a supine position and do some documentation. What I want today is for you to document other goniometers in here, I assume. Yeah. I really want to know about internal and external rotation. I want to see how you measure it, and I want to see what you measure. Because we talked about the textbook definitions today, and I want to see how many of us fit that. I'm not going to worry about flexion and abduction. And I'll remind you that we should be looking at, and most therapists don't, we should be looking at extension too, because there's a lot of functional activities that occur in extension, right? Okay, so then I do want you to put them down supine and do your rotation motions. Um, we're also going to do our quick and dirty strength tests. Um, classically, most therapists do flexion, abduction, external and internal rotation. If I'm just doing a real quick pass, again, I'll put both arms straight out, push against me. And I'll bring them out here. I use bent elbows so I don't have quite as long an arm and abduction. If you find weakness, then there's a whole lot of things we've got to start looking at. Again, I referred you to Ben Kibler's work on the scapula, because I've seen a lot of people weak in flexion, and as soon as I do a scapular stabilization maneuver, that flexion weakness goes away. So I'll teach you how to do that too as we go along. Um, internal and external rotation, this doesn't really tell me much. Right? Because most people that have rotational deficits occur up here. But they also impinge up here and a whole lot of things. So I know if they're weak down here, 
I'm going to magnify those problems once I go up. But you should have some basic baseline of that kind of thing, right? And the other muscle tests uh, that you should be doing are the um, internal rotation tests, which we have neglected for a long time because we do this and we assume they're normal, right? So how are we going to isolate? I want you to be familiar with three, but we have a new study starting at our office actually looking at some of these different parameters. There are three ways described in the literature. One's the bear hug, both arms on your shoulders, and press. And you have to then measure. So I'm going to pull against that arm and put it down. Just let it drop and pull on that arm. That's my comparison, right? according to the literature, mostly subscapularis. Next one is belly press. Same thing, I'm just going to pull his arm off. And we use digital dynamometry. I don't think we have one here, do we? No. There's a little spaceship shape thing that, that if you're doing any clinical research, you, you need to have it, and I'll try to remember to bring it in. But it digitizes the muscle test instead of saying 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, or whatever, it gives you a digital readout. Don't need it on everybody. You probably only need it if you're or if you're really publishing, but it's going to give you a much more accurate indication. Better test, in my opinion, is the lift off. Let's spin your legs the other way, if you would. So we put his hand in the middle of his back. I usually try to go for a consistent point, so the easy thing for me to do is to find the superior angle of the ilium and have his hand equal with that and have him hold his hand against his back and pull it off. He's pretty good, and obviously we would do a comparison. The first thing I do, I'm sorry, I didn't do that right. Uh, the first thing we do is see how much clearance they have, and then push away, and then I want them to hold there, and I'm going to push in for, for subscap. So I apologize. I did it backwards. Okay? You see it? What we'll do clinically then is put them on their tummy and give them weights. And see, okay, can you do one pound on the left? Can you do one pound on the right? Can you do two pounds? Can you do three pounds? And quantify them there, or use digital dynamometry with that. All right? Are the other two tests okay if they don't, he doesn't have enough internal rotation to get there? So um, the other two are, in my book, not used. If he can't get there, mm -hmm. then I know I've got a huge GERD deficit. Okay. Which reminds me, I skipped over the Apley test on range of motion in the right position now to do that. First of all, what do you see on him? If anything? Wings. More on the right than on the, on the left. left. Yeah, and his inferior angle is prominent. Mm -hmm. You know what type that is? I will really be impressed if you are, if you do. No. I didn't even talk about it yet. <laughs> That's considered a type 1 winging scapula, okay, when the inferior angle is, is more prominent. And we will talk about all of this. That's going to usually tell me something, but I'm not going to give myself away. So, aptly external rotation, you remember what we did? Index finger as far down as you can. So, if his spine of his scapula is at 3, he's a couple below that. But I told you, I don't care. All I do is just mark. Now go the other hand. Not a whole lot. Now let's go to Apley's internal rotation. <laughs> you have to wing to internal rotate. You have to. Let's see on this side. A little difference, huh? So that's going to bear some in more investigation for us. Why don't you stand for just a second and forward. Anything else you notice about him? Besides his amazing good looks. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. Yeah. Uh, on the right. Craig, are you right-handed? Yes. Good question. What else do we want to know? sports that were right hand dominant. Yes. So what kind of things do you like to do? Well, I played baseball up until ninth grade. So normal or abnormal? Normal. Yeah, that's actually a normal finding for him. So you don't want to go get all bent out of shape. He's got a depressed scapula. 
therefore he's up a trapezius, the nerves knocked out, and all that kind of stuff, right? You have to do this. That's a good job of incorporating what we talked about today. But when he does have that depressed scapula and he has his history, I'm going to take a closer look when I put him down on his back at his rotary mechanics. I was actually surprised. He's got, a, he's got some girdy here, but he, how come it doesn't show up here? The scapula is so little. Exactly right. So normally you'll pick it up in that aptly internal rotation position. But he has learned to compensate using his scapula. So his internal rotation looks great. Let's put you down on your back for just a minute. You want to tap? Is that too cold? Uh, no. I'm picking on you. I'm sweaty. That's all right. Well, left arm first. We want to isolate, so we're going to stabilize his scapula. We're going to look at his external rotation. And he's well past 90. You'll we'll see that when I come to that side. And internal rotation, that hurts. Yeah. But I can get him fairly close, about three inches from the bed is my reference. Now let's look at his dominant side and try to relax. And you can see he goes pretty far back. He's got a little pop there. Did you see the facial expression? <laughs> Apprehension. Okay. So that we're going to come back to that. But I want to see what his internal rotation looks like. So if I stabilize him and he can't let his scapula rotate forward, protract, <laughs> what happens to his internal rotation? Wow. And compare that, you couldn't maybe see it as well on the right side. That's a GERD deficit, but it's a tricky one. I'll pick up 90% of the GERDs I see doing this, but I'd have missed it on him if I hadn't seen that scapula. 